RenderBots, welcome back to our first episode on motion. So um, when I used to work at Apple, the first question most people would ask me is, um, what is motion? What can it do? And it's sort of, sort of sort of expectation of what motion can do. Now remember, it's only uh, a sort of 50 pound uh, product, uh, but it is actually an incredible program. But I think some people, when they would come into the store and ask me, you know, what is it? What can it do? Um, it was kind of hard to explain. So what I did is I put a little video together to explain kind of um, the processes and, and, and what it was capable of. So what I want to do is kind of take you through the same thing. But before I do that, I need to obviously uh, talk about where you get motion from and, and how to install it, etc. It's really, really easy. You're going to go to the App Store that's on any Mac. So if you buy any sort of Mac, there's going to be something called the App Store. And um, when you click on the App Store icon, it will come like the iOS version. It will like uh, have options to search, etc. Now in this case, um, I brought up the App Store here, a little screenshot, and it has a uh, motion here. And this little icon here, and it looks like this. So it's just, so it's just called Motion. Okay, it's been made by Apple, it's been around for a number of years, and you can get uh, Pro Certified on this. In other words, if you get very good at this, you're able to actually go to a Apple Certified um, training area and actually um, apply for certification, which will obviously enable you to teach, etc. Um, so it's a really good pro app. It kind of works in conjunction with Final Cut 10, um, which, you know, it's uh, it works really, really well with it. Uh, but it can actually work with iMovie and things like that as well. It just depends what kind of uh, you, you expect from it. So over the next uh, sort of few episodes of um, learning with me, you're going to see how you can integrate it into lots of different uh, other, other products as well, not only Final Cut 10. But, you know, it can create its own standalone film. So... Let me just take you through that. But here's here's motion. Here's what it kind of looks like when you go and buy it. Brief description, etc. Um, so that's how you can download it. You download it through the App Store. Set to take nine forty nine pounds. And here's a little film which it used to play people. So let's get it up and running. Let's have a little look. So everything you see here has been created in motion. I've had to remove the soundtrack for copyright reasons. Uh, otherwise, this didn't actually go with the music, which is pretty cool. So here we have a green screen character here. And what motion it will do is take the green screen out, uh, project a, um, a, a real-time spotlight onto it, and then produce these kind of like uh, 3DS boxes. Here we have the same thing. It's a video clip of a guy playing drums, able to knock a background out and make it look like he's actually in there. That's a standard two-dimensional uh, video there as well. So it can do 3D, 2D, but you know, it's very, it's very, very cool. Now, this is quite nice. So again, everything you see, done in motion, lights, uh, reflections, real-time video with a uh, false background. This is quite nice, explosion. Sort of ident here, motion is, this is something called uh, sound effector. So you can make a graphic actually bounce to the music without any sort of effort at all. Looks like build these little 3D rooms and things like that. Really pushing motion to its maximum. This little Xbox had a little Xbox One came out. Just create that little ident event. So there you go. Um, so let's pretty just fly back through some of those. So what is motion? So as you see, it's quite good just for creating uh, text effects. And here we have that green screen again. So all a motion does is says, here's a video, and it's got a guy in the green in the background. We can color pick. In other words, take that green out completely, just leaving him all by himself. Once we have him all by himself, we're able to cast a light onto something called a plane in the background, and that creates this real time shadow. So really really easy to do you can just manipulate that again and see boxes and it's quite nice these little lights you see flashing around this kind of yellow area and green area there that was actually in time with the music which really worked really well but here's kind of where motion kind of started really it's this two-dimensional kind of um if you're used to photoshop or know anything about photoshop it all works on layers which is what motion does as well so you see that coming to full flood there we've actually got um, two-dimensional things all coming in and then the background is the only moving bit of footage coming in as you see it works really, really well in that bit there I'd actually seen that on a, um, a notice board when I was actually working in uh, Birmingham in, in the UK and I thought that'd be really good to copy so that's where that came from it's kind of like a good science experiment probably inaccurate with the moon etc but there we go and again, this is nice, but just to show that you could kind of create this kind of 3D environment with a road and little lights and reflections, etc. A little bit more complex than we're going to go 
uh, initially with this, but you know, as we work through motion, you know, you could, we can do this. It's no problem at all. Here we have a, a guy, and basically he's put his hand on the glass. And what we're able to do with motion is create this 3D kind of futuristic environment where he's actually you know, talking to some sort of guy um, through it. It's really, really nice. And again, actually quite simple to do. It looks quite a complicated thing, but really, really simple to do. Uh, this used to be um, an advert that used to appear on the um, computers at Apple. And um, I thought it'd be really cool just to show that you could actually build the same sort of idem again all in motion very very nice very slick and here we have again just showing that we could use text on the left um, a real-time video in the middle and then just a static photograph on the right and just create this kind of like cube out of them uh, out of floor with a reflection in there you know but it's a really, really nice effect to show you that you can use lots of elements to create a 3d type scene again another um, built up kind of uh, graphic in motion all the different layers of houses there and we've got a, um, a real-time uh, video of a car coming in and doing a little spin on the side of there it's one of my favorites really kind of, kind of shows you what is possible really in motion is um, these are layers again just like in Photoshop spoke about <coughs> and what we're doing here is we're layering um, real-time video so obviously this guy just shot a scene in, in New York and we've able to add um, a layer of um, smoke real-time explosions and actually some little 3d particles kind of bouncing on the floor and give the camera a bit of a shake as well to make it look like it's kind of exploded and kind of upset the, uh, the thing so quite a lot's happening in that and um, it's really quite nice the way motion works like Photoshop in the way that we can build the layers up cut the bits that we don't need to make it look like the explosion was actually right behind the back of this bollard here make another little eye dent there and here's that sound effect of things. So this is probably one of the, the most clever parts of motion. While you're doing something called keyframing, which enables us to move um, objects over a period of time by putting little keyframes in, um, motion has something called automation, like something called behaviors built in. And that enables us to do really cool stuff with music. In this case, I've got the um, equalizer to jump um, with a graphic. Um, and again, you know, just did it, it was, almost too simple uh, masking a nice little one here as well with the DJ set etc and again building these little 3d rooms just to love doing things like this and finally this little set of Xbox and if you took Google the old Xbox advert it looked very very similar to this the shiny floor you going through this and then swinging the Xbox sat in the little um, screen at the end uh, really nice so that's the video I would show people um, when it would ask me, you know, what can motion do? And obviously by the end of it, hopefully you get a little bit, a bit excited, a little bit like, okay, that's cool, let's, let's jump on. So let's do that. Let's, let's open up motion for the first time. I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm treating this like you've never seen it before. I mean, we're starting off um, fresh. So let's open up motion. So the first thing you're gonna see here is um, kind of motion asking us, what do you wanna do? What do you wanna do? Now, as I mentioned before, it is actually works quite closely with Final Cut. So a lot of the stuff we do in Hindsight here can work with Final Cut, uh, but can be standalone as well. So for most of these sessions I'll be doing with you um, right here on the Renderbox channel is a uh, motion project. And this means that it's gonna be a standalone entity. So this is great for idents, for films, or little TV things you're doing, or maybe creating an advert for a, um, a hairdresser salon that might be rotating in the background so this is done with the word motion project here but as you can see it's actually capable of a lot more inside of here but very uh, final cut sort of focus so i'm going to start here with uh, motion motion project because it's highlighted the yellow box we're going to come over here to this section now you'll see preset it's looking at hd 1080p if i give that a click um we can now see that we can produce all types of video run up to 4k which obviously the current highest highest definition we can so this will depend really on what you're doing. Um, a word of kind of advice is that if you're just training other people to do this or um, just kind of playing yourself, I wouldn't go for these high resolutions. Uh, the reason is because once you start building up very complex sort of animations, you will find that your computer will slow down. Okay, and you don't really want to do that if you're just playing and trying to figure your way around. So a lot of times when I was demonstrating motion to people, I kind of just go for this broadcast HD 720. 
because you know yes it's a, a small kind of graphical scene you, you think you're interacting with but it's more than adequate to kind of um, see the end result and get an idea of what the graphics look like obviously you'll choose something if you're producing this for somebody else but again they might only want to be having it on the internet and keep it a low resolution um, so it loads quickly etc so um, keep that in mind uh, next up is frame rate so as you see NTSC that's our American friends um, sort of broadcast quality what I tend to do again is um, kind of stick with stick with the basics you know we don't want to kind of um, over complicate this so let's keep it with 25 frames okay and again you may use different ones depending on the project you're going for but again this is very important before we start duration uh, 25 seconds so this is how long uh, this animation is going to take now um, I think people used to laugh when I said oh let's, let's keep it at 25 and they go oh I'm not sure it's going to be longer than that I said well a lot of times if we look at animation and idents for companies if you think of um, things like either studios paramount pictures that whole kind of way it kicks off at the start you know we're probably taking probably 10 or 15 seconds but it seems a lot longer you know when you're watching it so this duration is here all about the project duration how long the animation is going to be but sometimes you might change your mind sometimes um, the client you're working with will ask you to change your mind don't worry about it we can keep it at 25 here um, if I want to change it to anything else I'll just give it a click you can see there um, hit the delete key type in 10 and you set it to 10 seconds um, let's go with 30 okay now remember we can change this inside of motion later on so don't get too hung up on this what is a good idea is try and go for something maybe add five seconds to the initial idea because we'll be playing inside and outside of that as we go through so there's a duration 30 seconds so we're going to keep it as that and then we'll see down here it's just telling us what we chose and uh, the way it looks which is fine um, yeah I'm good with that so we're going to press open okay guys so now we're inside of motion this is the interface we're looking at now it can look a little bit scary when first going on as, as you see you've seen what motion is capable of so when we jump in here it can be a little bit like oh my god what's going on so the first thing i do is get rid of all this um, stuff that's kind of in our way press a little green button that's going to maximize the screen there we go so now we can see motion uh, nice and big if you've used final cut before by the way this might actually look a little bit more familiar this whole uh, scene so let's go through um, the interface and see how it's going to help us um, get from A to B. So the first thing we can concentrate is on the left-hand part of the screen. We've got this thing called a library. Now what's good about the library is it has all the components we need to start building or adding effects or some built-in effects. So basically, yeah, Motion has its own library which has a whole host of things already built in for us. So let's look at an example of that. We've got the word library here. So if I go through here, we've got some little behaviors, filters, etc. Now, once we get to see something called parcel emitters, you'll see that the menu to the right changes. As we look at this menu and click on them, we notice the lower part of the screen also changes. So let's go to the word African, for example. And we get a really nice little um, idea of what that actually looks like. It's all going to move in there. Aura, quite nice. There you go. That's kind of what um, people expect motion to do, sort of funky stuff like this. A lot of people ask me, can I use them in my projects and not have to pay any sort of money? Absolutely, everything you see here is all free uh, to use in your own commercial projects. You don't get, don't have to any royalties against that. And there's a load of stuff in here, so you could look like you're a motion um, expert pretty quickly just by adding a few of these. And look at that, it's called a liquid transfer. So if I want any any of these, I'll actually just drag them across here, and I can use them straight away. So that's the library, and again, we're going to delve into here a lot. There's a lot to see. Next up is the inspector. So the inspector just tells us all about the element we've brought into our uh, project. In this case, we have nothing. So in our inspector highlighted, you see the word properties here. There's nothing here. But if I was to create a text object in here, suddenly my project window would light up. So let's have a look at that now because I think it's very relevant in going forward. So let's move our course cursor across the screen and we see this thing called a T there. It's, it's fantastic, it's called T for text. There's a little arrow, but we'll ignore that for now. We're not going to get too complicated. Let's hit the word T for text. And you'll notice nothing happens on the screen. And there's a reason for that, because what it's doing is telling, asking us, where do we want that text to go? So as I move this around, you'll see I've got a little text tool thing here. People sometimes expect the box to uh, appear on the screen, uh, which is, um, yeah, doesn't happen. 
Okay, so I'll just give you a single click there with the mouse and suddenly I've got a, I've got an actual text storm.